Welcome back to your channel home of movies. Today we will be recapping a biographical movie inspired by a true story. The film opens with a black screen and a voiceover stating, I died when I was 28 years old. A young George Foreman is seen riding in the back of a pickup truck with his sisters Mary and Gloria and his brother Roy. Their mother, Nancy, sits in the front passenger seat. They arrive at a dilapidated house. That night, Nancy divides a small hamburger into four parts. Before George eats his portion, Mary signals him to wait as Nancy says grace, though she doesn't eat any herself. After George eats his piece, he remarks on his hunger, and Mary offers him part of her share. The following day at school, George wears tattered clothes with many holes and shoes so worn that his socks are visible. When the teacher asks a question, George eagerly raises his hand, but she overlooks him due to his shabby appearance, instead choosing a well-dressed black student. During lunch, George sits with his classmates, but has no food. He watches them eat sandwiches and chicken. One classmate taunts him for having nothing to eat, tossing his chicken skin near the trash and mockingly calling George poor man. The class laughs. George, overcome with rage, rushes at the student who mocked him, punching him to the ground and daring him to do it again. When the teacher arrives, George flees. The scene shifts to an older George walking the streets of a rough Houston neighborhood. He meets a friend who offers him a flask, which George accepts. They spot a seemingly drunk man leaving a bar and decide to follow him. They attack him, searching for his wallet, but find a police badge instead. Realizing the man isn't drunk, they hear approaching sirens and flee. George and his friends split up, with the police car pursuing George. George hides under a raised house as police officers and a dog search for him. To evade the dog's scent detection, he smears mud mixed with sewage on his face. This tactic works. On his way home, George sees a commercial for Job Corps. He goes to his mother's workplace, a diner, to discuss it with her. Despite her reservations, she supports his decision and urges him not to get into fights. Job Corps then sends George to California. George thrives at Job Corps and befriends Desmond, a numbers whiz who sneaks in a flask. George is pleasantly surprised to find new Converse sneakers from his mom in his bag. After a day of training, he discovers that someone has stolen his shoes. At lunch, he vents to Desmond and notices a guy wearing sneakers identical to his. When George stares at him, the thief bolts out the door, prompting George to chase him across the campus. George eventually catches the thief, holding him out of a dorm window. Doc Broadus happens to pass by and intervenes. After retrieving his stolen shoes, Doc Broadus questions George about the incident with the door while the thief escapes. Doc gives George a choice, jail or going home. George pleads not to be sent away, and Doc hesitantly decides to take him somewhere. Instead of the expected destination, Doc drives George to a boxing gym. There, Doc provides boxing headgear and gloves for George. He faces off against another boxer who swiftly moves around the ring. George becomes exhausted and the opponent knocks him down with a single punch, causing onlookers to laugh. This humiliation triggers George's anger once more. George leaves the ring and demonstrates his immense strength by knocking a punching bag off the ceiling with a single swing. Impressed by George's potential, Doc Broadus decides to train him. Doc teaches George to be aware of his movements, strategize with his mind, and leverage his physical advantages. They team up with a trainer and a promotions manager recommended by Doc. Despite George's success in the ring, his mother is disappointed to learn he's returned to fighting. George insists it's not fighting, but a sport with rules. He wins several fights, prompting Doc to acknowledge that while George won't make it to the Olympics in a year, he'll be ready in five years. George feels disheartened by this timeline. Against expectations, one year later, George finds himself at the Olympics. He competes against Russian fighter 
Jonas Sepolis, and achieves victory, earning the gold medal. The crowd chants his name enthusiastically, and George waves a small American flag in celebration. Back in Houston, he proudly wears his gold medal. However, his friend is unimpressed, believing George allowed himself to be used to represent a country that doesn't value the black community. George takes this criticism as fuel and embarks on a series of victories. At the train station, George meets Paula and they start dating, eventually marrying. George progresses to the championship fight against Joe Frazier. Commentators predict George might leave the arena on a stretcher. Desmond watches from the crowd. Against the odds, George defeats Frazier with a knockout, becoming the new heavyweight champion of the world. During a celebratory party, George offers Desmond the role of managing his finances if Desmond gives up drinking, which Desmond readily agrees to. Upstairs at the party, George encounters an attractive woman in his room. Rather than asking her to leave, they spend the night together. Muhammad Ali appears on TV, insulting George and challenging him to a fight anytime, anywhere. George gathers his entire family at his mansion for his daughter's birthday party. He takes charge of the cooking arrangements but remains distant from his wife, Paula. During lunch preparations, George claims credit for providing the food, while his mother insists on giving thanks to God. Mary announces her pregnancy with her husband. Meanwhile, Desmond informs George that he's investing his money in secure stocks. Paula receives a mysterious call with no one on the line, leading her to confront George privately. Paula confronts George about his numerous affairs and urges him to confess. However, George is focused on his upcoming fight against Ali and avoids addressing the issue. Ali brags in front of sports journalists in the hotel lobby and George overhears him. When asked for his response, George confronts Ali face to face but ultimately walks away. Spectators suggest George could knock Ali out. During the fight, Ali leans against the ropes, absorbing George's punches which tire him out. Round after round, George becomes increasingly exhausted. Throughout the match, Ali continues to taunt and talk trash. In the final moments, a fatigued George is knocked out by Ali, who wins the fight. George talks to his daughter on the phone while Paula insists he sign divorce papers. Nancy tries to comfort George but doesn't understand why he fired his trainer and promotions manager. George vents about how Ali's strategy led to his defeat. To regain respect, George organizes a boxing exhibition aiming to knock out five opponents in one day. Ali serves as a sports announcer and taunts George during the event. They exchange words in the ring. Later in the locker room, George decides to return to being a genuine fighter rather than focusing on showmanship. At the hospital, Mary and the baby are in critical condition. Nancy wants to pray, but George chooses to pray alone outside. He prays that if God spares Mary and the baby, he can take George instead. By morning, both Mary and the baby, named George, are in good health. George's next fight is against Jimmy Young. Although George severely hurts Young, he struggles to finish. In the twelfth round, George is knocked down and ultimately loses by unanimous decision. In the locker room afterward, George begins hearing voices. He blacks out and falls hitting his head. George wakes up surrounded by concerned loved ones. Despite their protests, he defiantly gets up and joyfully exclaims, Hallelujah! while showering himself with water. He delivers a sermon at church, expressing his newfound devotion to God and renouncing his previous love for fighting. In the congregation, he notices a young woman named Mary. Doc urges George to return to boxing but George firmly declares he's finished with fighting. Unexpectedly, George visits Ali's mansion. Instead of seeking a rematch, as Ali suspects, George humbly asks Ali for forgiveness. Ali initially teases George sarcastically, but their encounter ends with mutual respect and friendship. George seeks forgiveness from Paula and commits to being present for his children.
he starts preaching on a street corner, facing hecklers who urge him to return to boxing. But George adamantly refuses, stating he'd rather die than fight again. He takes Mary out to lunch, and she's impressed by his transformation. George shows her a dilapidated church that he plans to renovate. He begins his new life as an ordained minister, dedicated to his faith and community. Seven years later, a grandmother approaches George. Four, help with her grandson, who's involved in street trouble. She suggests boxing as a solution, but George refuses, believing it's not the answer. Later, George sees on TV that his grandson has been arrested for burglary. He realizes that if he had met the young man where he was, rather than where George wanted him to be, he could have positively influenced his life. George meets Desmond at a dilapidated gym on a street corner and shares his plan to transform it into a youth center to steer young people away from the streets. Desmond agrees to help by rearranging funds with the bank. After George leaves, Desmond secretly finishes his flask. The youth center becomes popular, positively impacting the community. However, one day the power goes out due to an unpaid bill. George learns from the secretary that Desmond failed to pay the bill despite assurances. George and Mary visit the bank, where an employee informs them that Desmond's financial decisions have left George penniless. Nancy visits George at the church and reveals she knows he's been searching the town for Desmond, who has disappeared. She pleads with George not to become bitter. George eventually tracks Desmond down at a bar. Desmond tries to flee, but George catches him. Desmond confesses that he lost all the money. Facing financial hardship, George does a commercial for BBQ sauce and sells his remaining possessions. Despite continuing to preach, his efforts don't yield significant results. With no other options, George reluctantly considers returning to boxing. Mary opposes this decision. One night, Mary wakes from a vision she believes is from God. She saw George becoming the heavyweight champion once again. George approaches Doc, who is training another boxer. Doc playfully teases George about his weight gain, setting a goal of 265 pounds for George to start training with him again. Determined, George gets to work, adding a new punching bag to his routine. Mary serves their kids pancakes while George sticks to oatmeal, and he starts running with his son. Despite the grueling training, George manages to reach 265 pounds. Impressed by George's dedication, Doc acknowledges that with some new techniques, George might have a chance. Despite skepticism about his comeback, George wins his first fight against Steve Zuski. His victories gain attention and the crowd begins to cheer for him. He continues winning more fights and commentators start rooting for his success. As George continues his boxing comeback, he capitalizes on selling his name and likeness rights for various products. He cultivates a friendly and relatable persona, departing from his previous surly demeanor. When he appears on The Johnny Carson Show, he charms the audience and makes them laugh. His fighting style evolves. He adjusts his footing and adopts a more relaxed approach, overcoming past issues with nervous tension and stamina. At the bank, George and Mary learn that their financial troubles are over thanks to the George Foreman Grill, projected to generate income for future generations. Despite this financial security, George feels unsettled. He believes Mary's vision of him becoming heavyweight champion once more must come true. At the age of 45, George seizes the opportunity to challenge Michael Moorer for the world championship, despite Moorer being 19 years younger. George wears the same trunks he wore in his fight against Ali. This time, George is considered the underdog. During the match, George faces a tough challenge. However, he applies the strategic lessons taught by Doc many years ago. George uses his experience and physical advantages to his benefit in the ring. In the championship match against Michael Moorer, despite being the underdog at 45 years old, George identifies Moorer's weaknesses and exploits them effectively.
Reflecting on his journey, George remarks that hitting rock bottom allowed him to discover his true potential, believing in the ability to achieve the impossible. George secures victory with a knockout and kneels to give praise to God. Following his retirement from boxing, George continues his preaching work. Financially secured by the $187 million from selling the rights to the George Foreman Grill, his youth center is supported indefinitely. George names all his sons George Foreman, believing, if one falls, they all fall. If one rises, they all rise. Despite their past rivalry, Ali and George remain close friends, speaking daily for the remainder of their lives. End of the movie. See you in next video.